because uh, I had many students say that they, the class should be canceled today because of the stone cold. <laughs> and luckily, I was able to risk my life driving from Whitesburg to come here for this testimony. But this is something that God's led me to do. Now, before I begin, I just want to say I know everyone struggles through their through their lives and. I truly believe that God is the only answer to our prayers and to our struggles. And he puts us through these storms to teach us a lesson so we can grow close to him each and every day. So with that in mind, I just wanted to share my story about how God he helped me overcome my struggles throughout my life. I will admit, I was in a dark place. And, it's, and as I dig into this testimony, it's going to be very dark. And I apologize in advance if I kind of tear up because that's just how uh, that's just how I how I felt during that time before I started glorifying to God. But uh, I was in a dark place where I thought things would never get better. And at one moment in my life, I was so deep and I struggled with depression. Even to this day, I still struggle with it, but back in about a year or two ago, I was just like so deep, I actually considered killing myself because uh, I thought this world would be a better place without me. And, but I eventually found my true calling, which is living through the Bible and lead by God's example. And let me... And let me begin this one by saying, it's okay to be different. You don't have to be like a normal. I mean, it's okay to be different. Uh, if you're uh, struggling with disabilities or uh, if you've been deformed at birth or just anything wrong, it's okay to be different. For me, at a young age, I was diagnosed with uh, a form of autism known as Asperger's Syndrome where, where I would have autism behavior, but I was really intelligent. And which would make me a normal person like everyone else. And because of this, throughout elementary and middle school, I was severely bullied. Because of that. And the bullying was which is what triggered my depression, first of all. And I just continued to struggle with that. And, and I, I had some counseling to help me overcome the bullying. And I always thought to myself that this world would be a better place each time that I would be bullied or made fun of, shoved on the ground, and uh, be called at by, by the school faculty for just um, acting. But I was really struggling. It's not acting. Bullying is just, bullying can kill everyone if you're not careful. Just be careful of who you bully. And then I just continued to think that, I would, that this world would be a better place without me and everyone else would be happy if I was dead. So like I said about the counseling, I, I did receive some. And then when I started to hit my adolescence and I hit high school, I started to become more normally functioning. I, and I eventually overcame the Asperger's Syndrome. And then I just came, became more normal as the older I got. And then at that point, I was actually happy with my life until I started hanging out with the wrong crowd, like Bristol mentioned when he was giving his testimony. Like everyone hangs out with the types of crowds they want to. You don't, you're not sure if they're going to be right or wrong. So to me, back then I was hanging out with the wrong crowd, and they would not appreciate any good thing I do for them. So, I mean, I am a nice guy. I just do everything nice for them, and they just don't appreciate it. But then every time I say something bad, then they just get this backlash on me, and they're like, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> Kudos to Dr. Hare for teaching me that one. <laughs> <laughs> but they, they would just be for doing something wrong instead of appreciating the good things I do for everyone else. And then I would feel absolutely miserable through tough times. And then I felt like I had no one to talk to. And then here's where things got a lot worse. 
As I continued through high school and my first years of college at Southeast, and I transferred here back in the fall of 16 to focus on teaching, on again and off again, I would struggle with my depression, and I saw a bunch of doctors, counselors, you name them, to uh, help me fight my depression. And even recently, I was struggling with it, uh, and Mary helped me out with it, which I'll mention in a, in a little bit. But, but I was thinking I was hanging out with the right crowd, but in actuality, they were just people keeping me away from my true calling, which is glorifying to God. And then I was never happy during that time, and I just wanted to be happy. And it just goes to show you, you're never happy if you hang out with the wrong crowd that puts you down instead of, rock, instead of rise you up from your struggles. And then, yet my friends would always find a way to make me feel internal sadness, which caused my depression to go deeper and deeper. I'm sorry. And then just over a year ago, in the fall of 17, I just reached my breaking point. Like, it was a typical Saturday, and I went to Lexington to take the practice test for the second time, because the first time I passed math and English, but I didn't pass the reading, and that's the one I, that's where I mostly struggled with, because I can't comprehend good, I'll admit that. But I failed it the second time, but, but spoiler alert, I did pass the third time, so I guess third time's the charm. <laughs> but then uh, after I failed it I just started uh, saying negative stuff on social media and then I just once again get the backlash from my so called friends that I hang out with which typically are the wrong people but this time it was just like so severe they just wanted to just uh, taunt me on social media and just talk crap about me Maybe even delete me and block me. And then and I just couldn't take it anymore. So later that night, I was, I was in my room, bawling my eyes out. And then and I was just alone in my room, just, just thinking how alone I was. And my parents were away, so they could so I could cry in private because I didn't want to tell my parents about the struggles I'm going through because they would just be like, everything will be okay. You just gotta ignore it. But there's just some time you, could, you just reach your breaking point and you just can't take it anymore. But, and then at that point, I thought things would never, never get better and they were only gonna continue to get worse. So I figured, what's the point of even living here? The next thing I know, I had a gun pointed my head. <laughs> I, was, I was ready, cock loaded to take my own life. <laughs> I was just so deep into my depression. Just, I just wanted to end my life. <sighs> I'm so sorry. I just thought that, I just heard all of the, in my mind about everyone making fun of me. <laughs> It just, it just all these negative experts and, and, just, and I just keep hearing, you don't belong here, don't die, I hope you die, just, just go away from this world. And I was just this close to pull the trigger, I actually had my finger on the trigger, <laughs> ready to blow. So thankfully, I did not pull it. Because I, I just realized there was so much more to life than to end your life early when God has a plan for you. So after that episode, I took to Facebook and then I posted my uh, breakthrough post that says, I'm, for now I'm going to glorify to God in any way that I can. And that was back in uh, September of 17 when that happened. And to me, that was just like literally the best decision I've ever made in my life. Because I mean, who are you without God? Just who are you without him? And 
and here we are one year later, and I'm just, I'm just the happiest I've ever been in my life. And that's all because I glorify to God every single day, read the Bible, and just pray every, every day. And then I had to make so many amazing friends, like all of you, and not just all of you while I'm here, but many others around campus that unfortunately could not make it here tonight. And then I even, uh, I even follow Bristol's example of saying that bring yourself and bring a friend with you. Because I like to see this church grow into one big community. And then I'm just so appreciative of my friends that I've made, that have helped me through my highs and my lows. And although, like I said earlier, I still struggle with depression to this day. And I mentioned that uh, in the fall of last year, I struggled with it, and then Mary helped me, and I went to see a, a, a doctor for it. But thankfully, I felt that, but thankfully, I was able to overcome it. Well, I might still struggle with it, but I just got to remember that I have God to run to whenever, whenever I'm feeling so helpless, hopeless, and and just down with myself. And in one song, it quotes, whisper his name and, he'll, and he will answer you. Call out his name and he'll answer you. And, or he'll come to you. And then shout out his name and he'll run to you. That being the Lord, Savior, Jesus. And God is the only answer for peace. That's what I believe. Like if you're feeling like in these negative emotions, God is the answer. To peace. And as every day passes, I know God has put me through all that to teach me a lesson. And with that, I just want to thank Him for put, putting me up through all that. And then 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18 says, Give thanks to all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So always thank God for your struggles. And I really have to thank him for, for helping me overcome mine. I just thank God for, for my struggles to, to make me tough. I thank God for letting me know that he is always here for me for when I am depressed or feeling down or just hopeless. I thank God for sending me the right people into my life to help me up when I'm feeling down, when I can't battle this on my own. I thank God for all the storms he has put me through. Because, because God doesn't put you in these storms for no reason. There is a reason he puts you through them. And that's to teach you a lesson to glorify to him more. And I just thank him for that. And I thank God for every little thing he has put me through. I thank God for being the true savior. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Can I get a hallelujah on that? Hallelujah, I'll give you one. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. <laughs> and then at any point, if you're going through what I, what I mentioned so far in my life, always seek God first. Because like I said, he is the answer to all our problems. And you don't have to do this, but... Uh, if you could, just whip out your phones or paper or pencil and then write down these verse numbers to look up if any negative feelings that you might feel. If you're feeling depressed like I was going through, Psalms 3417. If you feel stressed out about school or life in general, Isaiah 4110. If you feel lost, which is like... Uh, Pretty much most of the population that uh, that don't glorify to God. Jeremiah 29 11, Joshua 1 9. And if you ever feel alone, but yet you have friends that would support you, but you just still feel alone. Proverbs 18 24. If you feel hopeless and think that things will never get better, 2 Corinthians 1 3 through 4. 
maybe you're not feeling loved by everyone. It's only you. And that don't matter because God loves you. Jeremiah 31.3. If you're feeling ugly, Psalms 139.14. If you feel worthless, Romans 5.8. If you're worried about everything that's going on in your life right now, 1 Peter 5.7. If you feel like there's no hope and things will, never, will not get better, just things will get worse, Psalms 31.24. If you feel like you're not good enough for anything, Romans 8, 15. If you have no joy in your world, if you have no joy surrounding you, Psalms 5, 11. And just things never getting better. If you think things will never get better and just get worse, just think they'll get better. And read 1 Corinthians 15, 57. And if you feel like your future is hopeless, which is what most college kids will struggle with, is they just don't know what to do with their lives. But if you feel like you have a hopeless future ahead of you, read Proverbs 16.3. And you just feel alone, like no one's, no one's supporting you and no one's there for you. Just know God's always there for you. Isaiah 43.2. And if you, if you feel like you had no friends, which is what I felt like when I was struggling through depression. But Hebrews 13, 56. I mean, these verses just they're not just to read, they're to pray for, to help your life go better. No peace? You feel like there's no peace on earth? Philippians 4, 7. If you feel spiritually weak and you can't glorify enough, Psalms 82. If you have like a broken heart, trust me, I've had a broken heart before. Even when the moment I, I, I try to commit suicide, my heart was so shattered. But if your heart's broken, Psalms 34, 18, and 40, 147, 3. If you're not satisfied with your life enough, Psalms 107, 9. If you feel like you're not blessed enough, God always blesses you. Psalms 34, 8 through 9. If you feel like there is some type of enemy coming at you, like Satan's trying to grab you by the arm and say, come to the dark side. Fight him off. Glorify God. And read Ephesians 6, 11. If you have no refuge or safety to run to when things go dark, Psalm 62, 8. If you're put in a bad storm, like I've been through countless times in my life. Psalm 61, 3. If no one understands you on why you want to glorify to God, tell them why you glorify to God. Because you live by His word. Psalms 147, 5. And if you're worried about your future, like what's going to happen next? Is the world going to end? Just know, Jesus is coming back soon. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. No, I just so much want to thank some people who helped me through my through my path of glorifying to God. First and foremost, I want to thank Bristol for accepting me into the campus ministries here. And I regularly attended his small group, and I learned something new each and every Wednesday evening <coughs> as I grow close to him every day. And I'll tell you, he is he was gonna be make an awesome preacher. <laughs> and then there are some people who are unfortunately not here tonight, now, like uh, Talor Mathis, for being the one that first helped me introduce my life back to God. As I met her in that uh, philosophy of religion class with Jeremy Horner. And then I, that's when I kind of started to believe again. But I didn't really start to fully believe until that fall of 17. <laughs> But, uh, and I just thank her also for the great godly advice she has provided me whenever I'm struggling with something. And I also want to thank John Bristol for reaching out to me whenever I need someone to talk to. When there's no one else around, he is my go-to. 
and that's and I want to thank Mary Turner for helping me through my recent depression, which happened like just last fall. And I was just away from everyone. I was just so sad. And then I went to her, said, hey, Mary, I think I have depression. And then she immediately helped me and contacted me to a doctor. And then, bang. My life has a uh, purpose again. And I also want to thank the entire cross-country team, who, is, who some of them are in attendance here tonight, for helping me whenever I'm feeling down so they can lift my spirits up. And they are like, one of, they are like the greatest group of friends I've ever made on campus, besides the campus ministries. And also a person I met all the way from Clay County, Tara England. I met her on Snapchat, and every night we used to talk about God and godly advice. Whenever, uh, whenever I wanted to know more about God. But last but not least, this one used to go here, but I saw her just a couple weeks ago. I was doing a graduation photo shoot, which photos are coming up, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank King Smallwood for being the heart of a Christian. Like, she was the best person I have ever met that was a true Christian, dedicating her life to God and praying with me and whenever I'm struggling. And then she's made my life better besides, uh, besides the whole community here. I just wish she was with us still. So I just miss her. Just because of everything that she's helped me through, she has the true heart of a Christian. All I just got to say is everything will go right if you dedicate your life to God. Things happen according to His plan. He put you on this earth for a reason. And that's to live out by God's plan for you. And that's why I want to become a teacher because that's what God directed me towards. And I hope to be a great teacher one day. And this, this is my last semester here, and I'm going to be student teaching in the fall, and I'll be graduating soon. So that time is coming up soon. Just time flew by so fast. But God has helped me through a lot. And even if I was hanging out with the wrong crowd, and I was like nudging him away, telling him to get away from me, he, he always stands by my side. And I am so thankful. That he's always there for me. Because, I mean, God always makes things better. And then, uh, this song I'd like to read my favorite Bible verse. Romans 15, 13, which quotes, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. There's always hope. We glorify to God. There is always hope. So whenever you feel hopeless, just know God is our hope. And always thank God when you pray. And I have a few Bible verses in here that specifically states about thanking Him. Like in 1 Chronicles 16.34, which states, I'll give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. <clears throat> For his steadfast love endures forever. And then in Colossians chapter 3, verses 15 through 17, which states, And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and accomplishing one another in wisdom, singing psalms and hyphens, and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Give it thanks to God, the Father, through Him. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I, and I assure you, as quoted by the news boys, God is not dead. He is surely alive. He lives on the inside, roaring like a lion. Just if you, 
If you ever struggle with all of these I mentioned, and if you feel like you're hopeless, just come talk to me, and I'll pray with you, or talk to Bristol, or John, or anyone else that knows how to pray with you. Because, because no matter how much you struggle, God is always by your side to make your life go right. Thank you. God bless.